Behold, I give you power. A sermon by John G. Lake. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him, and a man with leprosy knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. That man knew that Jesus had the power to heal him, but he did not know it was God's will and that Jesus had committed himself to the healing of mankind. If he had known, he would have said, Lord, heal me. It is always God's will to heal. Our faith may fail. My faith failed to the extent that unless someone else had stood strong for my life and prayed for me, I would have died. But God was just as willing to heal me as he could be. It was my faith that broke down. God is willing, just as willing to heal as he is to save. Healing is a part of salvation. It is not separate from salvation. Healing was purchased by the blood of Jesus. The Bible always connects salvation and healing. David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins, who heals all your diseases. There never has been a man in the world who was converted and was sick at the same time who might not have been healed if he had believed God for it. But he was not instructed in faith to believe God for healing. Suppose two men came to the altar. One is sick and lame. The other is a sinner. Suppose they knelt at the altar together. The sinner says, I want to find the Lord. Everybody in the house will immediately lend the love of their heart and the faith of their soul to help him touch God. But the lame fellow says, I have a lame leg, or my spine is injured, I want healing. Instead of everybody lending their love and faith in the same way to that man, everybody puts up a question mark. That comes because of the fact we are instructed on the word of God concerning the salvation of the soul but our education concerning sickness and his desire and willingness to heal has been neglected. We have gone to the 8th or the 10th grade or the university on the subject of salvation, but on the subject of healing, we're in preschool. Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be clean. Did he ever say anything in the world but I will? Or did he ever say, I can't heal you because it isn't the will of God? Or I can't heal you because you're being purified by this sickness? Or I can't heal you because you are glorifying God in this sickness? There is no such instance in the Bible. On the other hand, we're told he healed all that came to him. Never has a soul ever applied to God for salvation or healing that Jesus did not save and heal. Did you ever think what calamity it might have been if a man had come to Jesus once and said, Lord, save me. And the Lord had said, no, I can't save you. Every man forevermore would have a question mark as to whether or not God would save them. There would not be a universal confidence like there is today. Suppose Jesus had ever said to a sick man, no, I can't heal you. You would have the same doubt about healing. The world would have settled back and said, well, it may be God's will to heal that man or that woman, but I don't know whether or not it's his will to heal me. Jesus Christ did not leave us in doubt about God's will. But when the church lost her faith in God, she began to teach the people that maybe it was not God's will to heal them. So the church introduced the phrase, if it be thy will concerning healing. But Jesus healed all that came to him. Notice what it says in Isaiah 35. He will come and save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame will leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute shall shout for joy. Salvation and healing are connected. This is to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, He took up our infirmities, and bore our sicknesses. And so we don't forget that great fact that he bore our sicknesses and carried our sorrows. Peter emphasizes it by saying, he himself bore our sins in his own body on the cross, 
that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Not by whose stripes you are healed, but by whose stripes you were healed. The only thing that is necessary is to believe God. God's mind never needs to act for a man's salvation. He gave the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to die for you. God can't go any farther in expressing his will in his desire to save man. The only thing that is necessary is to believe God. There is salvation by blood. There is salvation by power that actually comes from God into a man's life. The blood provided the power. Without the blood, there would have been no power. Without the sacrifice, there would never have been any glory. Salvation by blood. Salvation by power. The church in general is very clear in her faith on the subject of salvation through the sacrifice of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Christian world in general, regardless of their personal state of salvation, has a general faith and belief of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the salvation of the world. But they are very much in doubt and very inexperienced on the power of God. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him, and a man with leprosy came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you don't tell anyone, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. 